Hello, everyone. I'm Zhi Huang Huang from the Center on Frontiers of Computing Studies, Peking University. I'm very happy to talk about our work, Bonus Maximizing Surprise. It's joint work with Yu Qing Kong, Tracy Xiao Liu, Grant Schoenbeck, and Shen Wei Xu. Now let's start with our motivation. As we know, people love watching competitions, including esports, TV shows, and sports. These competitions generate very high revenue. For example, FIFA generated more than 4.6 billion USD revenue in 2018, and Douyu, an esports live streaming platform in China, generated 6.6 .6 billion CNY revenue in 2019. So here comes a question. What makes the competition exciting? There are many factors. For example, an amazing goal by some famous soccer players, an amazing insight by a chess player, an exciting moment in basketball, and salary. Today, we mainly focus on surprising moments. The picture here shows the T-Max time. He scored 13 points in 33 seconds reversed the competition and brought a huge surprise to the audience. What is surprise? When people watch a game, their belief about who would win in the end changes over time. Intuitively, the surprise measures how much the audience belief changes. The figure shows the win probability curve of the Phoenix Suns in the NBA playoffs. We can see the ups and downs of the games, so it brings a lot of surprise to the audience. By contrast, in the game between Philadelphia 76ers and uh, Toronto Raptors, the win probability barely changed in the second half. The purple frame the part is unable to surprise the audience, and we call it garbage time. Previous work has shown that more surprise leads to more entertainment utility. Even though the game on the left happened a little later, it still has far for more views on YouTube than the game on the right. Our studies in the League of Legends S10 also supports this. We collected the audience real-time belief of the outcome and their rating of the game. The curve on the left had more surprise and their rating and a higher rating and the curve on the right has less surprise and a lower rating. Then the key question is, how to design a winner selection scheme that maximizes the amount of surprise and consequently maximizes the entertainment utility? Specifically, in our paper, we focus on widely used point systems to illustrate the above question. Consider a point system with n rounds. There are two players, Alice and Bob, in each independent round, Alice beats Bob with probability P and Bob beats Alice with probability one minus P. The winner of each round gains one point. After all n rounds are over, the player with more points wins the tournament. It's a very natural setting. However, there could be a problem. Consider the setting when Thor versus Captain America. Thor is a god and Captain America is a human. So Thor has a higher win probability. In this setting, n equals nine and p equals 0 0.7, which means there are nine rounds in total and Thor beats Captain America with probability 0 0.7 in each round. After calculation, we found that the final round has a 86% probability of being garbage time. This is because Thor has a high probability of scoring five points before the final round and winning the whole game. Audience doesn't like garbage time. So how to prevent garbage time? We can give final rounds a bonus. Many competitions have uh, applied the bonus to prevent garbage time and bring more surprise to their audience. Since 2015, Indy car racing has doubled the points for the final race of the season. The Diamond League from 2010 to 2016 determined the winner by a point system over a season of seven meets and the points for the final tournament are doubled. Another very popular example is the Quidditch match in Harry Potter. The game concludes when the golden snitch, which is worth 15 times a normal goal, is captured by one team. Back to our setting when n equals 9 and p equals 0.7. 
Next, we study the relationship between bonus and the garbage time. Let bonus be the points of the final round. The chart shows the probability that the final round is garbage time on the different bonuses. Notice that as the bonus increases, the probability of the final round being garbage time is getting smaller and smaller. When a bonus equals nine, the, prob the probability equals zero. So in nine, the optimal bonus, it seems to minimize the garbage time. However, the answer is no, because when bonus equals nine, the previous rounds all becomes garbage time since the outcome of the competition only depends on the final round. Therefore, we need to make a trade-off between the final round and the other rounds. Formally, our research question is to find the optimal bonus X, which maximizes the audience overall surprise. First, we give a formal definition of a belief curve and surprise. Belief curve is the audience belief of the outcome over the duration of a competition. Bi means the belief at round i. Following elite at all as the definition, surprise is the fluctuation of belief curve over time. The surprise of round i is the absolute difference between the belief of round i and round i minus one. The surprise of a belief curve is the sum of the surprises of each round. Thus, our optimization goal is to find x that maximizes the expected surprise of all possible belief curves. Then we compute the optimal x for different n and different p, and we have insight one. More uneven matchups lead to a larger optimal bonus. Here are three examples. In a setting when Thor versus uh, Iron Man, the two players are well matched and the probability that Thor beats Iron Man in each round is 0.5. Then when they compete for nine rounds, the optimal bonus equals one, which means no bonus. In a setting when Thor versus uh, Captain America, Thor is stronger than Captain America and he has a win probability of 0.7 in each round. In this setting, the optimal bonus equals five, because we need to give Captain America a chance to come back in the final round. In a setting when Thor versus the Hawkeye, the power gap between the two players is even greater. The probability that Thor beats the Hawkeye in each round is 0.9. Then the optimal bonus equals nine, which means that the result of the final round determines the outcome of the whole competition. This is because if the outcome is determined by multiple rounds, Hawkeye has a little chance of winning. Then we define the expected lead be the number of points the weaker player will need to come back in expectation. Interestingly, the optimal bonus approximately equals to the expected lead. That is, we need to provide a chance for the weaker player to come back. However, in the above model, we assume P is certain and uh, known. In reality, we do not always know P. For example, what is the probability that Thor beats uh, Superman? Thor is from Marvel cine Cinematic Universe and uh, Superman is from DC Extended Universe. They have never competed before and uh, we have no knowledge about the winning probability P. To address this limitation, we model the audience prior of P as a beta distribution. The audience will update her belief during the competition. The beta distribution has some nice properties. First, the expectation of beta distribution is alpha on alpha beta, alpha plus beta. Second, the historical score between two players is A to B. Then P follows the beta A minus one, uh, A plus one comma B plus one. This figure describes the uh, uh, different distributions over P determined by the parameters alpha and beta. Then we introduce uh, three examples for beta prior. The first is Thor versus uh, Iron Man. They have competed uh, eight times before and uh, won four times uh, each. Then the prior P follows the beta 5,5 and the curve on the right is the density function. The second example is Zor versus Captain America. Zor won six times and Captain America won two times before. Thus, the prior P follows beta seven 
comma three and the curve is the density function of the beta distribution. The third example is Zor versus Superman. They never competed with each other before. Thus, the prior P follows beta one comma one, which is uniform, uniform distribution. Next, we compute the optimal X for different N and different alpha beta. Then we find in the symmetric case, more uncertainty leads to a larger optimal bonus. Uncertainty is one on alpha plus beta. For example, in the setting Thor versus the Iron Man, we have alpha equals beta equals five, and the optimal bonus X equals one. And in the setting Thor versus the Superman, we have alpha equals beta equals one and the optimal X equals three. This is because more information is released in the first few rounds under uncertainty case in order to balance the surprise of the final round, the value of bonus needs to be increased. Then I'm going to show our theoretical results on the different settings. We have closed form formula for three cases, and the worst cases can also be computed in ON complexity. The following numerical studies illustrate the importance of our optimization. The overall surprise varies with the bonus size, and in case I here, the optimal bonus creates surprise that doubles the surprise created by the trivial setting when x equals one. The main challenge we face in this problem is that the surprise function of x has no closed form and is difficult to compute. This is the function. Next, I will briefly introduce the method we use. Our method is divided into three parts. First, we find what that whatever x is, the ratio of expected surprises between adjacency rounds is a constant. Then we can uh, combine the surprise of the first n minus one round, turning the question into a trade-off between the last two rounds. Finally, we can find the optimal bonus by difference. This is our main technical lemma, and we can see the overall surprise is a linear combination of the penultimate round the surprise and the final round the surprise. Then we can see when bonus X increases, the surprise of final round and the penultimate round change different. Finally, we difference the expected surprise and find the local maximum. That is the optimal bonus. In conclusion, we mainly study the design of bonus in three cases. First, when the two players are well matched and P is certain, we don't need a bonus. Second, when we have no prior knowledge, a small bonus is optimal. Third, when the two players are uneven matched and P is certain, we need a large bonus. There are still several work to be done in the future. First, we can combine machine learning to design esports games. Second, we can model games with imperfect information like Wilworth and Avalon. Third, we can consider the player's strategy change caused by the bonus. Finally, I would like to thank the reviewers who provide help to us and thank you, thanks for your listening. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for the presentation and uh, very intuitive uh, problem to study. Uh, does anyone have questions? Okay, uh, I have a, I have a question. Uh, my question is, how does your like, uh, do you know how your like uh, setting and your results uh, change uh, if at any around like players accumulate like different scores? Because I remember from the paper that they accumulated like same score except for the final round. Right. So, uh, so sorry. Can you repeat the question? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember by uh, by reading your uh, paper that uh, except for the final round, uh, mm -hmm. there was like a reward of like one in each round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how does this change if you allow like for different uh, values or if they're drawn for like some distribution? 
Yeah, so it actually uh, we proved that uh, if we modeled everything the beta prior and regardless what is X, like what is the bonus in the final round, so the, the expected surprise in the uh, the first uh, my friend runs, the, their ratio is fixed. Mm -hmm. So that is why we can model everything being the trade-off between the final round. And mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. And I have a second uh, very quick question that is uh, off topic. What uh, software did you use to like make the diagrams? They're very nice. I think they use PPT. It's just like PowerPoint. Too. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks. And does anyone else have uh, questions?